Hi, this is Michelle with Pink and Main. Thanks so much for joining us today for the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo event. The theme today is stencils. Boy, stencils are hot. And there's a reason why, they are so much fun. So we have lots of six by six stencils at Pink and Main, but we recently changed and went to a new size of stencil. So this is our new size of stencil and they are eight and a half by six and a quarter. So what that means is you can do your slimline cards, you can do your five by seven cards, you can do your four and a quarter by five and a half cards, you can do your four by four cards, your three by four cards, you can do all your card sizes basically with our new stencils. And I could go through and I could show you all of the different designs that we have, but you can check them out on our website, pinkandmain.com. We have lots of fun designs and a lot of our new stencils, the bigger ones, have a really fun decorative edge. So you can create lots of cool things by using the decorative edge. With our new size of stencil, I wanted to come up with a storage solution for the stencils. I struggle with where to put my stencils, where to keep them so that they're easy access, that I can just grab them and use them and easily put them back. So I came up with a binder storage solution. This is an A5 size binder and it has two rings and a little front pocket here on the inside. So all of our new size stencils come with the two holes that will fit right in the rings. So when you're done with your stencil, you can clean it up and simply just put it in the binder. You can create your own paper dividers or whatever that you want to keep them separate, or you can just stack them all in here and flip through and see what you need and when you need it. As Also as a part of our binder solution, we have some really nice plastic pockets that have a nice little flap here at the top that will stay closed. It has the two holes to fit in the binder, just like the stencils. But the nice thing about these pockets is you can use them in or out of the binder. So if you wanna just use them, put your stamps and dies in here and stack them in little trays or whatever, you can do that just as well. They're nice and sturdy. They're a thicker plastic than the some of the thin sleeves that you might find. They will fit slimline dies and slimline stencils. They're nine inches tall by six and a quarter inches wide. So you'll, they'll fit your six by six stencils. So there's lots of different options for you to use our new storage system with the binder and the inserts. With the stencil theme today, I wanted to focus on ink blending. It's one of my favorite things to do with stencils. So let's look at some of the different backgrounds you can create with ink blending. So I've used a couple of our stencils and just ink blended with different colors and they just kind of nicely blend together. You can create with one color. Look at that, that's our from our warped stencil. That creates a fun look for a background. Here's another one that's multicolored. With our new size of stencils, you can do slimline cards. So here's a slimline background. This is from our bursting stencil. This is a real pretty, it, it has a floral look, but it could also be used like fireworks and stuff in the summer. So let's do a little bit of ink blending with a, one of our new stencils. This one is called Pyramids. I've simply taken my card front, four and a quarter by five and a half, and I've used washi tape to tape it on the back of the stencil, and that's gonna hold the stencil to my piece of paper so it won't move around too much. Here at Pink and Main, I do all my ink blending with our mini ergonomic blender brush or our original ergonomic blender brush. We were one of the first to bring these to market and they are so super easy and simple to use. I like them because I can hold them in my hand different ways. I have weak hands, so some of the longer 
handled brushes were a little bit hard for me to control over time. If I was just gonna use them just a little bit, it wasn't bad, but to do backgrounds, bigger backgrounds, and to go from color to color, it just got a little bit hard for my hand. My hand would get weak and tired. So with this brush, I can change my hold on the brush really easily. I can hold it different ways and I can get a really nice blend. It has super soft bristles, just like the other brushes. We've got the larger one and the mini one. So if you wanna get into smaller, and mine are nicely stained, but that's okay. I keep them clean, and I'll show you how I keep them clean in just a moment. Now we've all seen beautiful colored and multicolored backgrounds using stencils. But don't forget about your black ink. I have not seen, actually I haven't seen anyone create an ink blended background with the black ink. And I'm not sure why, because black and on like the white paper can make a really bold background for a card. So let's jump in and let's, uh, this is just a Versamark, or Versafine, excuse me. Versafine black ink pad. It is a pigment ink, but that's okay. I'm gonna use it with my mini blender brush. And I'm just gonna get some ink by rubbing the brush on the ink pad. And in a circular motion, I'm just going to blend it onto the stencil and the paper. I'm just going to keep doing this until I've covered the entire card panel. Now I've covered our panel. My hands are nice and inky. We'll clean that up. My brush has got the black ink on it. The reveal is going to be the coolest part. So normally I would say if you're doing a multicolored background and you do one color, you can brush off your brush on scratch paper until you don't see any more color and then you can go into the next color. You can use our scrub it clean cloth to scrub the color off until you don't see any more color and then you can go into the next color. But when you're done with all of your ink blending for the project, you'll want to clean your brush. So we have a brush scrubber and we have a brush cleaner. To clean the brush thoroughly, you can spray this directly onto your brush and then rub it onto the cloth. Or you can spray some into our brush scrubber, which is a silicone brush scrubber. It's got a handle on the back, so it's nice and easy to hold, easy to use. I'm just gonna spray a couple of spritz into the brush scrubber and then we're gonna scrub our brush clean. So you just take your brush and you just kind of rub it over these little nodules that are there. That's gonna clean up in between the bristles and get it nice and clean. So once I've scrubbed it here, I'm gonna go to my microfiber cloth and I'm going to get this brush nice and clean. I'm going to get the rest of the residue of the ink out of there and it's also going to help me dry it because the next time I use the brush I want it to be nice and dry. You don't want to ever ink blend the brush when it's already wet. You just don't get a nice smooth blend if your bristles are really wet. And that is our brush cleaning options for you. Now is my favorite time. This just looks like a muddy mess on the stencil, but let's do the reveal. I'm just gonna carefully remove my washi tape from the back. And here is our black and white background. That is gorgeous. So let's make some cards with our stencils and our stenciled background. For this card, I'm going to use our Mask It Square stencil. So this is a six by six stencil. It's a little bit older, so I don't have the two holes that go in the binder in it, but you could easily punch the holes yourself with a hole punch, or you can slide it into an insert or the front pocket of the binder. 
but it has a square cut out in the center. We have an A2 size card etched around the edge, so you could see if you wanted to put it right on top of an A2 size card and see where it's centered. But with our mask it stencils, you also get the negative piece. So you could have fun putting this square in the center of your card to mask off a white area and then blend ink around it. So that's a lot of fun. You can create different backgrounds with these. Have you seen our glitter paper over at pinkandmain.com? We have some beautiful selections of six by six glitter paper. They're super sparkly and shiny. I don't know if the video really does it justice, but they are so shiny in person. You've just got to see it. And this is the white. The white is, the white is so perfect for so many things, but did you know you can ink blend on it and make it any color that you want? You can make it match whatever project you're working on. So let's, let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna get my square where I want it, and I've die cut the white glitter paper a little bit smaller than my card front because I'm gonna layer it on there with a scallop rectangle behind it. But I can still pretty much center it on here using those guidelines. And I've got a nice bright purple ink that I'm just gonna blend into this square. I wanna give a highlight spot for my character on my card to stand in so he's not floating around on a blank card. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this away and the look I wanted was a square section at the bottom. I could have filled in the entire square and it just would have been a purple square on my glitter paper, but I wanted it to be a little darker at the bottom and just kind of fade out at the top. And that's so easy to do with our blender brush. Just start out with a lot of ink here at the bottom and then just keep going in circular motion up to the top as the ink gets soaked up by the paper, it gets thinner and thinner, so you get a lighter and lighter effect up at the top, and it's just got this beautiful ombre effect. And like again, like I said again, I don't know if the video picks up the shine and sparkle that this glitter paper has, but it is beautiful. And if you use a dye-based ink on top of it, you're still gonna see all that sparkle and shine, but it's going to have that different color as the background. So that's super fun to play around with all your different color inks and the white glitter paper. So now we can put our card together. As I stated, I cut out our white glitter paper from one of our stitched rectangle dies and I cut the coordinating scallop rectangle die to layer behind it just to make it pop off the white card base. I cut it out in black. So that really makes it pop. I'm using our new Easy Squeeze Craft Glue. I use this for all of my cards. I found over time doing cards for as many years as I have that tape runners don't seem to hold up uh, for the long haul. In, in my experience at least. So I love to use a good liquid glue for all my cards. Remember when you're using a liquid glue that a little bit goes a long way. You really don't need a whole lot to give a nice, strong, permanent hold. There's our card base so far. And I call the, the glue the Easy Squeeze Craft Glue because this bottle is so easy to squeeze and it's really easy to use. It has a nice fine tip so you can get a fine line of glue or you press, you squeeze a little bit harder, you can get it as thick as you need it. When you're adhering something to glitter paper, something with a little more texture, you definitely want to use like a liquid glue to make sure that it will, will hold. There's our adorable little elephant. This is from our Ears to You stamp set. It has coordinating dies available. And I've just die cut this little word hello out of black cardstock. And this hello is from our wreath based die. So you get a wreath die cut with it as well, but it has this nice word, hello. 
And this is where our glue really shines because with the fine tip, you can really get on these intricate word dies. So there is our cute but simple card, but it's nice and sparkly. And I love the addition of that ombre square ink blended in the background. It gives our little elephant a place to stand. He's anchored to the card, but it's still just nice and simple. The last thing I want to add to my card to make it just complete to me is some embellishment. So I'm going to be using some of our essential pearls. We just came out with these. These are beautiful iridescent pearls. They're flat backs. You just glue them on with our glue. And the Essential Pearls has an ivory, a white, a light gray, and a dark gray, and a black. And then you get some multicolors if you need some different colors. I'm going to use a few of the gray because I think they would look really nice with the, with the black background and the gray in the elephant. And you get three sizes of each color in there. And there's our completed card. Super cute. For our next card, are you, I've used one of our newer stencils. This is the puzzle stencil. And it has this fun zigzag edge. And that's what I used in creating this card. So on our slimline card panel here, I have already stenciled or ink blended the edges. So basically, I lined the stencil up on this card base, and with the blue ink, I just ink blended on both of the edges. And then this bright green space over here, I put the stencil again over where I had already inked the blue ink. So just laid it over top, just fit it right over where the blue is. And then I ink blended some of this green and again, just let it fade off into the, into the card. It just gets lighter and lighter and fades away. But this gives me a nice spot to highlight the characters that I'm going to put on the card. So I will go ahead and glue the layering piece onto the card base. So there we have our card base. And I cut this layering piece with our layered slimline dies. So it fits nicely on the card, leaving a white border around it. And my slimline card is eight and a half by three and a half folded. So I've got some adorable little sushi characters from our Roll With It stamp set. And I've used the coordinating dies to cut the pieces out after I've colored them. And we're just going to assemble them over here on the side. And then I've stamped the sentiment from the stamp set. It says, sometimes you gotta roll with it. I stamped the sentiment and I took the, the same ink that I used over here on this side to highlight the characters. I just blended that onto the paper so it would stand out over here. And here's our card. Isn't that cute? A little sushi themed card. And check out the little face on that wasabi. Isn't that adorable? Super simple and easy. We've used that edge of our stencil to create just a nice clean border on our card. I ink blended a little area just to highlight our characters. It draws your eye over to them, but it gives them a place to sit and be anchored to the card. And then we did our sentiment over on this side and bring that color over so everything coordinates and matches. And it's just, again, super easy and simple to make a really adorable card with a nice impact. We're gonna make another slimline card. So another eight and a half by three and a half inch card when it's folded and I used our new Flora stencil with our layered slimline dies I cut another card panel and look how gorgeous that is with hot pink orange and yellow so how I did this is I started with the yellow and 
I picked three places to put the yellow. It's off to the corner here. I came over a little bit and did the center of that circle or that flower. And then I came down here and did around this flower. So just kind of picked three areas for the yellow. And then I took my orange ink and I went around all the places that were yellow. I just took and went around them with the orange. And then next to the orange, I just filled in with some hot pink. It blended beautifully and I uh, love this background. So I'm gonna glue that down to my card base. Check out that card. That is almost just pretty enough to send just like that. But I thought I would add a sentiment to it. It really doesn't need a whole lot other than just a really nice sentiment. So from our beautiful slimline dies, I cut out Hello Beautiful is what it says. And I cut out the shadow feature to the word dye in vellum because I want you to be able to see that beautiful background behind the words, but I also want to separate the words a little bit from the background. So vellum is a nice way to do that. It gives you a little separation, but also allows you to still see the background through it. And check out this word <laughs> that I cut out. It's cut from our gorgeous holographic cardstock. Along with new glitter papers, we have two packs of holographic cardstock. They're six by six, and you get different patterns in each set. There's set one and set two. And believe me, when you're gonna want them both. They're so shiny and beautiful. I have a pack of each to hoard and not use but I had to cut into some because I had to show you how gorgeous this looks and the sentiment. And it is just so super shiny in person. And I thought it would be really pretty against this background. So I'm going to glue the sentiment to the vellum shadow feature first. And the best thing to do is to go ahead and glue down the word beautiful. You'll see the H and the O are connected. So once you have this glued down, you can more easily fill in the rest of the word hello. Now we have our beautiful sentiment ready to glue down on our card front. So with the words beak on the vellum first, I now know where I can put my glue on the back so that you won't see it through the vellum. So I'm just gonna put my glue where the word beautiful will cover it up. And look how gorgeous that is. I love this. I'm gonna finish this one off with a few of our pearls as well. I think that just add just a little bit of that nice finished touch. So I've used the iridescent white pearls from our Essential Pearl collection. And I've used the smaller size. I just thought it looked really nice. Looks nice with that holographic cardstock sentiment as well. Thanks again for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed my segment on stencils focusing on ink blending to create beautiful backgrounds for your cards as well as fun borders. I hope I've inspired you to pull your stencils out and get creative. Get inky, get messy, it's a lot of fun. You can find all these products and more at pinkandmain.com. And until next time, my friends, keep living the creative life. 